Hey, how you doing everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Andrew Plays. As always, I am your host, Andrew Ambrose, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's Tuesday right now, and I assume a lot of you are doing schoolwork right now, or just finished, or are about to begin. And, well, hopefully this little video will keep you entertained for if you're feeling down or, you know, just bored one day. Anyway, we're back again with another rare game from back in the day that you've probably never heard of, unless you're like me and you're into obscure games like this. Today's game is another one of the uh, Nintendo Hudson collaboration from 1984, um, where Nintendo licensed um, their characters off to Hudson Soft so Hudson could make uh, PC games based on Nintendo's popular characters. And well, one of these games, um, of course, today's game, is actually the was actually the rarest of all of the games, and of course, it's Donkey Kong 3 Dai Gyakushu for the Sharp X1. Um, so I'm pr I'm pretty sure not many people know about Donkey Kong 3, but um, some some people may be familiar with it. But in case you're not, um, in 1983, after Nintendo uh, made a big hit with Donkey Kong Jr., after they made a big hit with Donkey Kong, they tried a third game in the series, and but. Instead of doing another platformer, they decided to make some sort of combination of a platformer and a shooting game. Since shooting games were still very popular, especially in Japan at that time. So, Nintendo thought they'd experiment and they'd try something new. And unfortunately, due to it deviating from the norm, and not only that, it was released during the crash of 1983 in North America... The game wasn't as well remembered or as big of a seller than the original Donkey Kong or its sequel Donkey Kong Jr. And but at the very least, Donkey Kong 3 did get ported to home consoles, at least in Japan. It got a Famicom version which came over to the US, thank goodness. And well, uh, Hudson decided to take Donkey Kong 3 and make their own special version of it like they did with Mario Brothers and uh, Super Mario Brothers, and thus we have Daigyakushu, or Great Counterattack, if you want to be more, you know, English. <laughs> so anyway, this is actually this is actually very interesting game and a very fun game, like most of the uh, games from that came out of this collaboration. As a very fact, it's actually. I say it, I said earlier it was the rarest of all these games because for a long time this game was considered to be very this game was considered to be lost for so many years until um, a few years ago when a bunch of talented individuals who unfortunately I do not know their names but if they're watching this they are very awesome and deserve a lot more credit um, they found they were able to secure an original um, copy of the game off of a auction on Yahoo Japan. And, of course, they dumped the ROMs for everyone to play, including yours truly. And so now we're here in 2020 with nothing to do with our lives except play some games and just try to hold out until the end of this crisis. So, yeah. Donkey Kong 3 Daigyakushu. It's hard, it's hard to point because the camera isn't uh, is in reverse with what I'm doing. It's like, I'm pointing to the, to the left, but you're seeing it's my right, so... Yeah, it's weird, but whatever. I'll, 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 I'll work with it. So anyway, and also, uh, two more things before we begin. Um, today's, uh, you know how in previous uh, incarnations I was using an NES controller hooked into this thing? Well, I haven't been able to find my NES controller um, a lot. I haven't been able to find my regular NES controller recently. And well, today I was looking for it, and I came across my uh, Joycard Sansui SSS controller, which was a controller made by Hudson Soft and Fukushima uh, Sansui in the '80s, and it featured a um, it featured a headphone jack and a rapid fire, like on the regular Hudson Soft Joycards that didn't come out in the U.S. Um, but however, this one did come to the United States, and well. I found this and I thought, you know, we're, since we're doing a Hudson Soft game, it would only seem appropriate we use this. Also because, well, besides the fact that I was too lazy to find my regular Nintendo controller, but also because it's pretty sleek in its design. 
it's better than with the golden it's like the famicom controller and it's pretty neat that hudson was even able to get this to the united states unlike with the other controllers that they made unfortunately but hey what can you do and on a final note i just want to say, say a little something for one of my friends kitsune 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 I know you're going through some hard times right now, and I know you're not feeling so well, but all I have to say to you, Kitsune, is I'm there for you, buddy. Stay cool. Now, with that everything out of the way, let's begin the game. Stage one. Yeah, one cool thing about this game. On the highway. Elton John vibes. Anyway, <laughs> so the cool thing about this game is that they did a really good job with the, the presentation of it with all the graphics and everything. Not only that, but you'll notice all these detailed backgrounds. The game itself, as you can see, it's different from Donkey Kong 3, and in a, in, in pretty much, in a way, it's actually it's actually a lot simpler than Donkey Kong 3, because, well, unlike in Donkey Kong 3, where you had, uh, uh, you could, like, hop up to different platforms to shoot Donkey Kong, here it's just a regular left and right movement, uh, shooter, shooter game. So... It's a lot more simpler, but it's still a challenging game considering that you still have these bugs trying to kill you, shoot, throwing down thorns at you. Ah, uh, crap. Got moosied into a corner. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a very, very weird game. Even for, like, Nintendo standards, at least in my honest opinion. Because everything seems so out of place here. Like this game has like a science, like a f 1950s science fiction movie feel. Because like there's like the strange bridge, and like you can see in the background there's a there's a UFO. And uh, actually, I think coming up in this uh, right stage three, we got a uh, on the country road. See, so you can see the moon, and you can see a UFO. I mean UFO. Obscured behind that uh, mountain over there. And they're these stupid worms. They were annoying in Donkey Kong 3, and they're even more annoying here. Oh, it's cute how they have the little jetpacks. Ah, uh, crap. They freaking got me, dude. Yeah. Uh. You know, it's funny. We ju we it's, we've been playing for about a few minutes, and I haven't even mentioned the game itself and how it works. Basically, in the original, just like in the original, you have to shoot Donkey Kong to the top of the screen. However, in the original, he was climbing down vines to re to drop down upon Stanley. Here, he's floating down using two small uh, parachutes in his hands to slowly descend. And Ollie and the. Yeah, and not only that, but in the original game, you were shooting spray at uh, Donkey Kong. This time, it's just regular bullets, unless that's supposed to still be insecticide. But it's but it looks like a regular bullet, so Wesley is just straight up fucking shooting at Donkey Kong to get him to the top. Which is pretty... pretty freaky, if you ask me. Stage 4. This is, this is going to be like... Look, this, look what this... The alien. Oh my god! Yeah, this game gets weird. There, there are aliens in this game. They don't even do anything. They're just like sitting there. They're just looking at us like, hey, what the hell is this? What the hell is going on? What, 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 what are we looking at? What is this? What is this crap? Seriously, we got much better things to do with our lives. Why are we looking at this? But anyway. Okay, 
that was a little racist, but whatever. Racist to monkeys. What am I talking about? Oh, game over. We didn't even get that far. You know what? You know what? I'm gonna try again. I might try again a third time, but I don't know. But I just want to get a little farther this time, because I've gotten much farther in this game before. Get ready. Heh. <laughs> it's weird sounds when he shows his teeth. On the highway. The land of us on the highway. Tiny Dancer by Elton John. Fantastic song. Listen to it if you ever get the chance. You won't be disappointed. On the strange bridge. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, it's like, the original Donkey Kong 3, it's a good game. I don't know, I don't know what you guys, like, some people still hate Donkey Kong 3 with a passion like it was a bad game. No, it wasn't a bad game. Just because something is different doesn't mean it's bad. Like, it's like, it's the same thing with Super Mario Brothers 2. It's like, seriously, people, get over it. And besides, speaking of which, Super Mario Brothers 2, not a lot of people know this for some reason, but a lot of the same people who worked on uh, the original Super Mario Brothers worked on the uh, Doki Doki Panic, which would eventually become the US Super Mario Brothers 2. Like, like uh, Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi, Takashi Tezuko were one of the main leaders of the project, and Koji Kondo provided the music of the game, so, and they, and pretty much the same roles as what they had with uh, the original Super Mario Brothers, except with Doki Doki Panic, they had a new guy, uh, Kensuke Tanabe, I think his name was? Yeah, I think he was new at Nintendo at the time, and well, uh, they had him direct the project, but most of the same team from the original Super SMB1 worked on Doki Doki Panic, aka SMB2. So, uh, yeah. That's, that's about it. Stage 4. The aliens! The aliens are here to take all our women, and children, and cows. Never forget the cows. The cows are important to our survival. Milk and beef. Well, unless you can't eat beef if you're like, re like a religion problem, or if you're like veg vegan or vegetarian, something like that, then okay. But for everyone else, it's important. It's vital. And that was scary. Donkey Kong got really low there, and I'm gonna make sure he doesn't come low like that again. These damn worms! I hate those worms. Worms in general are are a massive problem. Unless they're the ones in your garden that eat all the soil, then those those worms are cool. And so are gummy worms. Gummy worms are pretty nice, but all other worms are just a nuisance. But if you like worms, then that's okay. More worms for you, I guess. Man, I talk about the stupidest things. I'm talking about worms. I'm a pretty random guy. Like, if you know me in real life, you know I am I am so goddamn random. I'm such a random, weird, crazy man. But I'm very nice. And I like talking to people. I may have Asperger's, but it doesn't stop me from wanting to talk to people, because life gets boring, and sometimes you need a good friend to talk to, talk about stuff you like, like video games, which is why I like, and I like video games, which is why I do this series where I play video games and talk to you guys about stuff. 
because that's also the because for me, that's the ultimate pleasure. Talking about playing games and talking about them with my friends. And he's almost at the top. If we could just squeeze a little more. There we go. Stage 5. Oh! Look at those graphics, dude. The spell, look at that design. They did a fantastic job on that. Written by ITA. Ita? Italia? Italy? Was this made game made by Italian? No, that was that was that was dumb. I apologize. Ooh, a flag. Ten thousand points! I, like when I was playing, I was playing this before, like trying to test this to make sure it was working. And I saw that flag, and I was like, "Hey, maybe this like gives me a power up or an extra life or something." But no, it, it just it, it just you know, it's just another points thing. Uh oh. commercials for Donkey Kong. They, like, in the, like, you know how Mario usually, usually wears an Armenian cap in pretty much every game he's ever been in? Well, in those ColecoVision commercials advertising Donkey Kong and even Donkey Kong Jr., like, Mario is just this guy with a mustache and wears a fedora. He wears a, he wears a freaking fedora, dude. It's freaking crazy, dude. It's pretty, pretty crazy. But still pretty cool. I love watching old uh, video game commercials from the early 80s. You know, from before the crash, or before and during the crash. There's just something about them that has a certain charm, especially the Atari commercials. I love Atari commercials from the early 80s and the late 70s, or pretty much all of the 70s. Atari was a cool company. They made some bad decisions, sure, but they still turned out some really good stuff. Then. There was a time when Atari, before before Nintendo ruled the market, when Atari was the biggest video game company on the planet. Of course, since uh, of course since the crash, Nintendo has dominated, and even today they're still a force to be reckoned with. But there was a time when Atari was the king of the video game scene. Oh, okay, well that worked. Oh yeah, I I, I forgot that in uh, Donkey Kong. Ooh, bonus stage! Kick ass, dude! Oh, it's just like Galaga, except I don't know any pattern because I never. I don't play this game as much as I played Galaga. And it's also very finicky, and I do not like this very much. To, it's like it's like it kind of reminds me of that uh, fly swatting game from Mario Paint. So anyway, as I was saying before, I forgot that in the original Donkey Kong 3, um, if you like, an alternative way to complete the level was to shoot all of the flies, and Donkey Kong would just run away like a coward. Hey, that's pretty cool. So anyways, like I was saying, like, if you, in Donkey Kong 3, the original, if you, leaving the earth, anyway, Donkey Kong 3, in that game, if you shoot all of the flies, um, and all of them get killed, Donkey Kong will just run away like a little coward and he'll f finish the stage. It's really hard to do since there are so many, um, so many flies that come out of the little beat, out of the little hives. But if you can kill them all, then Donkey Kong will just run away without without even thinking of trying to come down on you. And I guess the same applies here. I forgot all about it. I first at first I thought the flies were just endless, but apparently I was wrong. This game gets very slow, but thankfully 
in a game like this where there's a lot of bullets, that's kind of needed because how else are you going to dodge all the crap that comes at your face? Come on, you fuckers. Yes! We got it. Stage 7. In the Astron Belt. Damn worms, I hate this freaking thing. Also, I can't help but notice that the bees in this game are a lot a lot less deadly than in the uh, original game. Like, in the, in the game, if you shot the bees enough times, they would explode and the three little bees that could kill you if you, if you didn't dodge properly. But in this game, they're just another enemy, except they lot, look a lot more menacing, but that's just about that's going for them. In this game, at least. No, 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 go away, go away, up, up, come on, almost, there you go, damn it, I hate those stupid worms, those stupid worms, always get in the damn way, go away, I hate you, you're nothing but a nuisance, and you need to leave before I call the, before I call the exterminator, although Stanley is supposed to be an exterminator, yeah, Stanley, that's the name of this character. Yeah, like, for whatever reason, Nintendo decided to replace Mario with Stanley. I guess it wouldn't make sense, because Mario in the original Donkey Kong games was a carpenter, and a carpenter sh uh, spraying bugs in a greenhouse wouldn't make much sense, so they just made a new character, Stanley, who was an exterminator. And, unfortunately, besides this game, we wouldn't see Stanley in any other games. I think, and unless it was, like, a Super Smash Brothers thing. And then again, there was the Donkey Kong cartoon from Saturday Supercade. That one episode, um, Stanley actually appears and helps up, helps Mario and Pauline with Donkey Kong, I think. Which is pretty cool, to say the least. Even though the cartoon wasn't that good, it was still interesting. And still pretty cool that they gave props to my man Stanley. You, you dirty vermin! Wait, Donkey Kong isn't, uh, is a, is a ape, monkey, gorilla thing. He's not a, he's not a mouse, so he can't be classified as vermin. But he's still a smelly rat. Figuratively. And we're dead. And we lost all of our lives, and of course, it's game over. But hey, I get to enter my name. A new record for me. <laughs> yeah, that, that music is pretty damn crazy. So anyway. That was Donkey Kong 3 Daigyakushu for the Sharp X1. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed that game. It was, it was it's a pretty fun game and a very unique title um, for Nintendo and Hudson. So... Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you for watching as always. And as always, my name is Andrew Ambrose, and I'll catch you later.